um, the thing that that I've been doing over the past couple of years, and I uh, I started teaching in fall 2020, so that was um, after everything had already kind of moved online. Students had had a chance at least to, um, or at least some of them had a chance to have some experience doing online learning. Um, but I, the reason I actually ended up creating, so what I did was I created um, a unit within my professional writing class, an introductory professional writing class at the 200 level, um, was creating a unit on essentially self-care. I kind of framed it as self, self-management. Um, partly, I think, <laughs> uh, because there's more, I guess, literature out there on self-management when you think about it in the context of um, some of the professional context that students would be working in. So, so students taking this class, um, they're not just professional writing, or I'm not sorry, they're not, we don't have a professional writing major, actually. They're not all writing majors. They, they're going to be working in a lot of different kind of professional contexts. So um, that, that unit incorporated mindfulness. And my research for, um, I think, over past 10 years or plus or whatever has, has been largely centered on mindfulness. So I think that um, I learned about mindfulness when I was, when I was 16 and, and that pra the practice of um, changing the nature of your awareness and change, becoming aware of how your attention to things and how you pay attention to the world around you influences um, how how much you're aware of your prejudices, how open you are when you're talking to other people and in your, and coming across new ideas, um, how open you are to learning. So I've that's kind of what I've been writing about and and was actually writing about during my my dissertation as well. Um, I was writing about also <laughs> quite quite appropriately um, how we we need to think about um, our well-being as more in, in a more interdependent way and I ended up actually writing <laughs> writing a chapter about um, um, influence I guess by my my parents who were American studies scholars who who learned a lot about American history um, I wrote a chapter about kind of how how art um, throughout history and American history has portrayed our kind of interdependence in a more linear way and kind of like the individual is kind of like responsible for their own well-being aside from the well-being of other people and kind of coming up with examples of you know modern discourses how you know um, if somebody has done something wrong it's completely on them not, it's not a reflection of what our, you know, where our society needs to do something different. So, um, so all that was like kind of my mind more, more theoretically as I was writing this. And then I kind of moved into teaching that fall semester. Um, and so it's, it was a little bit of like coincidence that I was teaching something that was geared towards um, supporting students helping them make sense of on an emotional level as well, what was all happening in the world, including all the violence that we were seeing and have seen. Um, I was also working from a distance, you know, teaching at IUM, but from a distance in Minnesota, just an hour south of, you know, Minneapolis. So, um, so it was, you know, especially with seeing kind of the local, you know, the local Minnesota news, the coverage of that, and even hearing helicopters go over where it was kind of very much um, the, um, the violence towards Black communities from the police was very much on my mind, as well as I was um, developing that unit. Um, and then <laughs> uh, over, over the past couple of years, I've also been really thinking about my students' positions because we're in a um, Indiana University Northwest is in Gary, Indiana, um, and a lot of our students are 
students of color, um, Black students were Hispanic serving institution. Um, the realities of what students, like their, their everyday lives are faced with trying to balance being a student while also, um, I guess, trying to take in everything that's happening in the news um, that's violence towards um, people of color um, on top of just the work-life balance needed to sometimes be working a full-time job, sometimes raising kids or caretaking for family on top of, you know, all the other stressors and being student. It's a lot. <laughs> so, um, so I've, but I've been really thinking in terms of like, if I'm trying to help them balance things, like even work-life balance, work-life balance looks very different depending on your positionality, right? So like the realities of what you're trying to balance with work looks very different um, from maybe a lot of students from a predominantly white institution. Um, so I, I've, that's really, I guess, thinking about my students and getting to know them and what their, what their stories are, what their realities are. Um, maybe on top of everything happening in the news, made me realize that I need to be more intentional. I've been working on revising my unit on kind of work-life balance to incorporate um, wellness as a need to also um, address things that are happening in the world, address social justice issues, that type of thing. Uh, so the unit on self-management, <laughs> uh, there, was, there was one part that covered kind of task management. So basically a way to keep organized, you know, to-do lists organized, how to manage your time, how to balance things out, that kind of thing. More like st strategies for that. Um, because, you know, students have limited time. They, they part of reducing the need to reduce stress is to better manage your time. Um, and so students would also share what their, you know, tips and tricks are with one another. But then, um, so I'd actually start with that just to kind of help students stay afloat, I guess, to begin with. And then I would move on to self-management, um, which again, I want to rethink my language on that. I, I want to actually call it self um, hyphen society care, because I think that you want to like remember that whenever you're doing self-care, it should also be care for others and vice versa. Um, but the self, the self-management uh, uh, unit would introduce formal mindfulness. So exercises that you could do where you're, you're practicing directing your attention as well as your awareness to eventually try to, or usually try to like um, open your awareness more. So you think about the opposite of when you're at a, <laughs> a red light and you're trying to make it to, you know, an event on time and you're really neuro focused and you're just kind of, you know, um, you're really in your thoughts. You're not much aware of what's happening with the rest of your environment. Um, with a more mindful state of awareness, you're kind of able to be aware of multiple things all happening at the same time. And I've actually, so I wrote um, an article for Computers and Composition called um, uh, basically about open, open listening and uh, how that interacts with like neural feedback discourses. So I would, I would, back in the day, <laughs> um, I actually got to um, take part in neural feedback uh, sessions where I'd kind of like be able to see what's happening in people's brain waves as they were meditating. Um, so neural feedback is essentially kind of like EEG. When you do an EEG study for a sleep study, you get to see what what your brainwave patterns are doing, they indicate whether you're in you know, a sleep cycle or that. Um, when you're doing neural feedback, you're doing it while you're awake and you're you can tell kind of how stressed you are by how much of a certain brainwave frequency you have. If you have a lot of the high beta frequency, usually it's an indication that you're either really, really narrow focused or can even be an indication of um, if that's a regular pattern that you have 
anxiety or post-traumatic stress, things like that. Um, but I could, I could watch even my own <laughs> brain waves. You, you could kind of read out of it. Uh, and there's actually, well, there's a whole lot of, um, interesting, I think about neurofeedback, but the main thing was like realizing that, oh, I have to really kind of be conscious and intentional about shifting my, my brain state and my state of awareness. And it actually took quite a bit of practice to be able to have a much, much more open type of awareness where, oh, wow, I, I really, <laughs> I don't usually have this state of awareness where I can hear the clock ticking while also being aware of what my body is doing down to my, you know, toes and finger fingertips and all that, as well as kind of like what are, what other people are saying alongside with my own thoughts, you know, like when you're self-conscious, you know, it's like the opposite of that. You're, you're hyper-conscious of what's happening maybe inside of you um, and narrowly focused on the things outside of you. So I think being aware that you can, I try to, I try to, in this unit, share enough of that so that students get a sense of um, that they, they can work with that differently, but that it, it kind of takes sometimes doing those formal exercises of sitting for a while and just practicing being aware of whatever is happening, whatever your state of mind is, just like bringing your kind of observation, you know, awareness to that. Um, so part of it is just, it's just that like practicing, like, you know, I have students do like a habit tracker where they keep track of trying to do five minutes a day at first or, you know, and working your way up that type of thing. Um, and then the other part is the informal mindfulness aspect where they, they practice changing how they are aware of um, maybe objects around them, like kind of like learning to look at them with what we call beginner's mind. So kind of as if you hadn't seen them before, more like more like an artist. Um, so if you notice like, you know, the light in your water bottle reflecting on the ceiling, kind of like learning to be aware of that and, and appreciate that as well. Um, mindfulness with animals, like how present you are with them and mindfulness of nature. So like literally sitting in nature and just listening to all the different sounds and things like that. So partly it's kind of like learning to to both pr practice that type of awareness, but also practice bringing curiosity to that awareness. So one of the, I think, aspects of the unit that I think makes the most difference for students, and especially relates to what we're talking about here, is practicing mindful listening. So mindful listening is like learning to basically be um, both self-aware and empathetic at the same time. Like, I think you can't really be empathetic if you're not self-aware, like aware of your own emotions. Um, I've had people where like, they, they think that they're good listeners and they're like, they're completely responding to you, but they're not bringing anything to the table, so to speak. So I think like, you know, encouraging students to practice both reflection and self-awareness as well as curiosity about others. So so one of the the things that they can reflect on, they have like four memos where they reflect on, you know, um, their self-management plan or, you know, things like that is um, they set an intention like, or they have the option to set an intention of practicing mindful listening like at work or with their family um, or with their classmates and then reflecting on like, what did that, how did that, or what was that experience like? Um, so so that's that's kind of like, I guess the unit in a large nutshell. <laughs> so.